Okay guys, we're gonna do a uh, compression test on the Studebaker inline six flathead here. This is just the cheapest tester that you can get off of Amazon. It was about $20. I got it in one day. Fitting fit right in without any of the adapters. So it comes in this case. You have these two right here, which you could use if nothing fit. You could just kind of wedge that down into the spark plug hole and, and it would kind of seal off. But it has a hose that's attached, uh, well, it has a long hose, which that actually fit right into my particular application. If it doesn't, you can screw it into one of these and then screw the whole thing into there. Um, I will say though, that if you do use one of these, make sure that you tighten this to the hose uh, pretty well, um, at least if you're going down into a deep well spark plug, like two on a, on a newer overhead cam engine, um, because what could happen is this can get stuck down in there and your hose unscrews from the fitting and then the fitting gets stuck in there and you gotta deal with getting that out. So just try to tighten this one to here really well, should you need to use that. What you wanna make sure that you do is have a fully charged battery. We're gonna make sure that the choke is open most of the way and I'm also going to just open up the, the throttle. I don't want there to be any air restriction here. All right, I think in that position we're all the way open. We're not going to have any spark so we don't have to worry about uh, firing off. Basically you got it set up. You can just go ahead and crank it. Yeah, in my case I'm just doing this. So we got it tight, uh, screwed in there. You don't have to go too crazy into the block itself but just Tighten it down so the O-Rig actually seats. And that's not very good. <laughs> 65 PSI on cylinder number one. And you want to get about four puffs from the engine. So you want it to go around four times. And then you can let go of the starter. Uh, if you just do it one or two, it may not come up as far as it will, but it, it'll kind of get to a point and stay there. So we are at 65 PSI. You can press this little button right here to release it and take it out. And this engine, the spec on this engine is to have 130 PSI. So we are very far down and you need to have at least about 90 to 100 to consider it to run. So that's not good news for this too big right now. But we'll see. I'm gonna write that down. Cylinder number two. Even worse. Got about 52 on that one. Now there's there's many reasons that a engine can be low in compression. Um, probably the most likely, if, if you have some compression at all, and we already have, we have 50, and you don't have a valve that's just completely hanging open, um, because you would have zero. It would have no pressure whatsoever. So this is either possibly a dirty valve, you know, worn valves, but it's still closing. It could be the piston rings are just not sealing really well. And then if you have piston rings that aren't sealing really well, then you can actually uh, inject oil into the cylinder and then do the compression test again. If the numbers come up, then you know that it's a piston ring issue, not a valve issue. Kind of, there's, there's ways of determining what the cause is without actually having to take things apart. This is cylinder number three. It's 65, just like the first one. And if I remember, the second number two cylinder, it didn't seem to have any compression at first. It kind of built it up a little bit. The other real issue with this particular style of engine, the uh, flathead's engine, is that the piston is actually over on this side. The valves are over on this side. So where you put the spark plug, it, it's actually not right over the top of the piston. So it's a little harder to do a, a wet in there. May or may not actually go right on top of the cylinder. I mean, it probably will. We'll still do it anyway. And I know it's piston rings, honestly, because before when we were trying to fire it up, there was some smoke coming out of the oil cap. So it's basically just going right past the rings down to the, the crankcase. All right, cylinder number four. 
that's actually that probably would run that's uh, about 92 that cylinder isn't too bad the other thing that you're looking for um, when doing a compression test is you, you want them to all to be relatively even so the fact that I have one that was 50 and one that's 90 is not good um, you normally want them to be around 10 percent the same from each other you know so if you'll have them all like if the spec is 130 and you've got somewhere between like 125 and 130 or you know maybe a little bit over that's okay a brand new engine might be perfectly all the same yeah this little compression toaster actually works pretty good i mean i don't know how long it'll last but it's doing what it's supposed to do right now the numbers are believable cylinder number five 70 on that i've been cranking this thing over a lot the last few days so it's not like it hasn't had time to kind of work the the rings in a little bit i mean not much but some and now number six i'm pretty sure has probably nothing because this one i think probably has a valve sticking open if it has anything at all then it's not the valve sticking open all right cylinder six and you can also you hear how the engine now just spins freely all the other cylinders it was a that slowdown is the compression so this cylinder is completely dead. It has no compression whatsoever. So when it's spinning, you're just hearing the motor spin. So number six is totally dead, zero. All right, so what I did was I jacked up the passenger side of the car. So that way, any oil that I put in is gonna wanna go that way. And I just have some old Honda 10W40 motorcycle oil actually and we're just gonna put a little in probably putting in too much but one it should not make a difference but the front ones should come up if it's piston rings let's be honest I mean you know the piston rings are gonna be not necessarily worn but there's gonna be some rust in there and some build up and they haven't been spun in 35 years so you know they're not gonna be their best but if we can get the compression to come up doing it this way we might be able to get it to run for at least a little bit. If it runs, then it may come up also. It may shoot oil out of these holes just because, you know, I may, I may just, it probably should just do them as I go, but I guess we'll see what happens. All right, this is cylinder number one, wet. Look at that, perfect. Actually a little high, it's 134. It's absolutely piston rings. And you can hear how it was more of a ch -ch -ch when it was coming around on that one. Cylinder number two wet. Look at that. Piston rings. That's actually 140. I guess it would, it would probably make sense that it would be a little higher because you can't compress liquid. So that oil that I just put, put in there would theoretically make the their less airspace in that chamber, which it would ultimately increase the compression um, so that's normal so not only is it sealing it but it's also increasing the compression compression cylinder number three wet well we can see what the problem is it's clearly piston rings again 140 on number three cylinder number four wet 135 hindsight being 2020 i probably should have just put some oil in these cylinders begin with i did do this a few years ago with just marvel mystery oil but i also didn't um have it tilted up on its side like this to where it's gonna flow over to that side it probably doesn't really matter truthfully and these numbers are shooting right up when it hits it it's like it goes right up to like a hundred on the first pump all right cylinder number five we should see so number five wet, we should see a similar number. 
that's uh, 120. Second guessing myself as far as did I see it right? Whatever, it's it's way up there. We're, we're more just looking for the general idea of work. This is more of a diagnostic stuff than anything. Now, number six should not change. I'm not expecting it to change at least. Number six, wet. Yep, same thing. Because that is more than likely a valve issue. It could also be a hole in the piston, but it's I Highly doubt that. All right, so that concludes the compression test. If you guys found this helpful, please subscribe, hit the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks. All right, guys, is this the time? I just did the compression test. We did a wet compression test and brought the numbers up to 130. They were all very low at like around 60-ish um, dry. It's gonna smoke like hell though if it does start because we just put all that oil in there. <laughs> yep, well it's already smoking. She's trying now. <laughs>